I just completed my introductory series on how to edit drone videos, or any videos, with Cyberlink PowerDirector 16. Today I want to talk about the specifications for this program and give you a couple tips, then tell you about upcoming episodes. What will they cover? Watch this to find out. By now you've probably watched the five episodes I produced on editing with Cyberlink PowerDirector 16. If not, follow the link in the upper right corner of this video for a complete playlist. Before I go on, many viewers are enjoying this series, so I'll be doing more tutorials on using PowerDirector. If you enjoy this series, click the little cartoon Jeff on the screen right now to subscribe, and be sure to click that little bell icon so you'll be notified when I post again. Also, if you want to buy PowerDirector, please use the link in the description below. If you do, Cyberlink will contribute to this channel at no extra cost to you. In the comments for one of these episodes, someone took me to task for not explaining what the computer requirements for PowerDirector were, so let me cover those right now. First, PowerDirector is a Windows-only program. It won't work for you Mac guys unless you use some kind of setup that allows you to operate Windows software. I don't know anything about Mac, so I can't elaborate on that. For now, just realize this is a Windows program. As far as the computer requirements, they're remarkably simple for a program used to edit videos. You need a system running Windows 7, 8, or 10, preferably in 64-bit mode. You need a minimum of 2 GB of RAM, an Intel Core i-Series or AMD Phenom 2 processor, and a graphics card with 128 megabytes of VGA VRAM. Frankly, I can't imagine running those operating systems on a computer with lower specs than those, so these requirements are really minimal. Understand that your system will work much faster if you have more installed, though. If you try running PowerDirector on your notebook, it will probably run pretty slow, most likely due to a limited amount of video RAM. It could also be the amount of RAM or your processor, however. So, as far as specs go, PowerDirector's requirements are pretty basic for systems running recent Windows operating systems, but you want the most RAM, processing speed, and video capability that you can afford to make this program work fast. I'll put the link to the specs for PowerDirector 16 in the description below. Next, let me give you two quick tips to make PowerDirector work for you. First, I mentioned in the first episode that by default, PowerDirector adds sample files to every new project you open. I don't know about you, but I think of this feature as a laxative. It irritates the crap out of me. Fortunately, we can put a stop to it. Open a new project. There are those stupid sample files. In the Edit tab, click on the Edit menu and choose Preferences. There is a list of options under Preferences. Choose Project. To the right, you see a checkbox for automatically load sample clips when PowerDirector opens. Uncheck this box and hit OK. Now, if we choose the file menu and select Create New Project, we see the program did not include those sample files. My second tip is to show you a faster way to bring video clips into your project. Previously, I showed you how to use the Add Media button to select the media you want to import. Quite often, especially when I'm working with drone video, I have just copied all my files into a folder using Windows Explorer, so I have that folder open with all the contents ready to grab. Rather than returning to PowerDirector and using the Add Media icon, I can simply select the media files I want to import in Windows Explorer, then drag them into my media library and drop them. Given my workflow, this is a faster way to import multiple media files into my project so I can start working with them and this works for video, photo, and audio files. So, what videos will you see for Cyberlink PowerDirector 16 on this channel moving forward? During the first five episodes, people expressed interest in learning more about the program, so I'll create additional tutorials to help you improve as a video editor. PowerDirector is remarkably capable, so I could do a lot of tutorials about it. Here are some of the things I can cover. These are just a few ideas, and you can see that some of these ideas came from people who made comments on previous episodes. I really want to hear your ideas. What do you want to learn how to do? What has caused you problems that you need a solution for? 
Help me out by sharing your ideas in the comments below. The next video will cover the trim tool. It's a more powerful way to cut your video clips down than the techniques I've shown you up to now. And I think it will be particularly helpful for people working with drone footage and GoPro video. So watch for that episode, episode 7, coming soon. Thanks for watching. Remember, sharing is caring. If you would share this video on social media, I would really appreciate your help. On screen, you'll find a link to the complete playlist of PowerDirector 16 video editing tutorials, so please check them out. If you want more tutorials, let me know in the comments below. Before you go, be sure to hit the like button. Also, subscribe to this channel so you know when more videos are released. Next video coming soon.